Hello everyone, and welcome to another episode of African History and Culture. Who do you think invented math, the movement of the sun and moon, medical techniques, and much more? What about the ruins in Zimbabwe being attributed to Europeans, Arabians, and Babylonians? If you don't know the pure, untempered black history, you might think the Europeans or Americans were the ones responsible. However, the reality is astonishingly different. If we start counting the African achievements attributed to other people, the list will never end. We have researched and compiled a list of African achievements to give you an idea of what Africans accomplished while the Greeks, Romans, and other civilizations lived in relative obscurity. But what are these achievements? In this episode, we will reveal the African achievements that Europeans and others have taken credit for. Let's get started. Perhaps this is a tragedy. Only that part of African history remains intact when Europeans visited and colonized Africa. Apart from that, no record of black history exists that hasn't been fabricated, tampered with, or falsified. This is the very reason why most African achievements have been attributed to Europeans since no record exists to show a direct link between Africa and these inventions, Europeans have claimed credit for them. However, there is good news. Over time, scholars and anthropologists have developed a deep interest in Africa, partly due to the presence of the Pyramid of Giza in Egypt. They wonder if such a magnificent structure could exist in an African country like Egypt. What if there were more civilizations? This, in turn, raises the question of whether the world truly understands the architectural and technological achievements that Africa may be holding, buried under layers of rock and dust. One such story is the ruins of Great Zimbabwe, attributed to Europeans, Babylonians, Arabians, Phoenicians, and more, except Africans who actually built them. Great Zimbabwe, located in modern-day Zimbabwe, is regarded as a remarkable achievement of African civilization. These impressive ruins were built in the early 12th century and are the largest stone ruins south of the Sahara. Initially, outsiders were credited with building the structures. However, evidence now suggests that the Shona people, who resided in the region at the time, were responsible for constructing the marvelously built stone fortifications Great Zimbabwe was the center of a flourishing gold trade that spanned across the Indian Ocean. Early European visitors had difficulty accepting that Africans were responsible for constructing such impressive structures and instead attributed their construction to other groups. Portuguese traders in the late 1500s thought the city might be the legendary Queen of Sheba City or the biblical city of Ophir. However, later visitors to the site believed that Phoenicians, Arabs, Egyptians, or even the fabled Christian king Prester John had built Great Zimbabwe. You can see how people were trying to diminish African achievements despite the evidence. Many colonialists maintained their Eurasian hypothesis, attributing the site's ruins to anyone but the historical Shona builders. However, archaeologists like David Randall McIver, Gertrude Catton Thompson, and Roger Summers were among the first to provide evidence that Great Zimbabwe was, in fact, built by the Shona people. Still, the belief in the site's exotic origins persisted among many colonizers. Before we continue further, please let us know if you are enjoying the video. If yes, please like, share, and subscribe to our channel to watch more videos on black culture, history, and civilization. Let's continue. Something frequently attributed to Phenomenal other sculptures is the unearthed in Nigeria in the 1940s, the Yoruba people of Africa created remarkable art, including the beautiful Ile Ife heads, brass and terracotta sculptures found in the city of Ile Ife in the 10th and 11th centuries. Ile Ife was a prosperous city, home to the ruler of the Yoruba people. While Benin and Oyo were more dominant cities, Ile Ife was revered for its art and cultural significance, particularly its sculptures. The lost wax process was used to create bronze castings in a lathe, similar to that used by the ancient Greeks. The beauty and skill demonstrated in the Ife sculptures are undeniable and a testament to African achievement. The artists were able to create casts of nearly pure copper, something that the Greeks, Romans, Chinese bronze casters, 
or even the Italian Renaissance artists couldn't do. Foreigners were likely astounded by the discovery of the Aeli Efi sculptures, but many were critical or refused to acknowledge their African origin. Leo Frobenius, a German archaeologist, was one of the first to study Aeli Efi in depth. He discovered a grove to the northwest of the palace, where he found two fragments of a terracotta face in a naturalistic style. Frobenius believed they resembled ancient Greek art and used them to support his theory that a race far superior to the African race once inhabited the area. Frobenius's most famous discovery was the brass head known as Olacun, which only reinforced his Eurocentric viewpoint. He believed he had discovered evidence of a Greek colony on the Atlantic coast of Africa. His publications codified these ideas in popular culture, astonishing the art world. However, all of this was mere fantasy. Unlike any known African art, the Eilie Eif heads had an immediate appeal to those familiar with European art. They were judged as works of art in their own right, comparable to anything created in ancient Egypt, classical Greece and Rome, or Renaissance Europe. It was assumed that they were made outside of Africa and imported or created in Africa by an artist working in a non-African tradition. The evidence supporting an African origin was largely disregarded. Attributing African achievements to non-African sources reflects the dark continent stereotype which discredits Africa's rich cultural and artistic heritage. And the story doesn't end with architecture. Did you know that many modern concepts we learn in high school mathematics were first developed in Africa? The Egyptians, over 35,000 years ago, scripted textbooks on math that included division and multiplication of fractions, as well as geometric formulas to calculate the area and volume of shapes. They even used math to predict the size of the Nile floods. Not only that, but they considered a circle to have 360 degrees and estimated the value of pi to be 3.16, which is extraordinarily closer to the actual value. But the Egyptians weren't the only ones. People in present-day Zaire developed their own numeration system 8,000 years ago. In contrast, the Yoruba people in Nigeria used a system based on units of 20, requiring an impressive amount of subtraction to identify different numbers. Scholars have praised this system for its abstract reasoning. And what about astronomy? Ancient African cultures made incredible discoveries that still form the basis of our knowledge today. For example, the Egyptians meticulously charted the movement of the sun, the constellations, and the moon cycles. They even developed a year-long calendar system with 365 and a quarter days. This is just genius. And believe it or not, they made clocks using moving water and sundial-like devices. This includes medical techniques and treatments as well. Before Europe became a dominant force, medicine in Egypt, Nigeria, and South Africa was more advanced. They used plants like salicylic acid for pain relief, which was similar to aspirin and kaolin for diarrhea. Some extracts were even found to kill gram-positive bacteria in the 20th century. That's not all, because Africans also discovered powerful treatments for cancer, malaria, and even abortion. Yes, Africans were living on another level when Europeans were just starting to understand the concept of living. In fact, ancient Africans were pioneers in medical procedures that are still used today, such as vaccination, autopsy, limb traction, broken bone setting, brain surgery, skin grafting, dental fillings, cesarean sections, anesthesia, and tissue cauterization. And while Europeans were just starting to understand the concept of antiseptic conditions, African cultures had already performed surgeries under these conditions. But as we know, all these inventions are falsely attributed to Europeans. Don't you think it's unfair not to give credit to Africans for the achievements we are using today? Doesn't it feel wrong to credit Europeans and Americans for things they didn't invent or discover? Let us know in the comments section right below. What if people have stolen more things from Africa and called them theirs? How can we know what the truth is? Do you want to watch more videos like this one? If yes, subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon next to it. Thanks for watching, and until the next video, stay tuned.